Well, that winter storm arrived, the temperatures plummeted, and we survived for the most part. So Danielle's gonna give you a tour of our current living accommodations. Well, welcome to our humble abode, at least for the next couple months. I uh, wanted to give you a quick tour of kind of how we've set it up. We had to do things pretty last minute with that winter storm that was moving in and we just barely made it. Uh, made for some pretty long days working by lantern light. But as you can see, what we did after getting the, the planks, the walls on the, the barn, we actually strung house wrap. We just wrapped it around and kind of tacked it up in the corners and on the post. Now, obviously it's pretty drafty in the barn, but this decreases the direct drafts that we have to deal with because it blocks off those cracks between the boards. You'll recall from previous videos that we were dealing with green lumber. So these boards are gonna shrink quite a bit and next year we'll put battens over to seal it up better, but we wanna give it time to dry first. So in the meantime, we've got this house wrap and it does a surprisingly good job. It, it, the air is pretty still in here and definitely gives us an extra barrier for the camper. Well, obviously we needed a way in and out of the barn. So the first thing we did was just cut a slit in the house rat that went across here. As you can see, we don't have windows in yet and originally we didn't have a door. So when that storm first came, uh, we, we cut a slit and we actually put rocks down on the bottom corners to hold the weight and try to keep those flats closed. But as soon as we could, we built this door. Now, one of the, I guess, things I'm a little proud of with this door is this glass is our first piece of really upcycle. Uh, it's an old window from that old barn out there. So I removed the glass from its original frame and we just kind of built a frame around it. And that is now being used in our barn. Well, we're on the outside now and we had initially planned on building these giant doors, sliding doors. We had all the parts and pieces except for the track holders. <laughs> so. The best laid plans didn't quite work out because we had everything we needed except the track holder. So, in a pinch, I had this old tin sitting over there for another project. I had taken this off a building uh, back in Springfield, Illinois, and uh, I had it sitting over there in stacks, and it turns out it fit just perfectly. So, we threw this tin up as a windbreak and a temporary door, both on the front and the back so that we could uh, keep it warm inside while we work on the doors. We had to take some big steps to try to protect the camper because this camper does not have any type of winter insulation. So one of the things we did was put straw, Sean wrapped it all around the base where the major water pipes are in order to try to trap any heat we have underneath the camper. Uh, that will help prevent freezing. Unfortunately, we did wind up hitting about six degrees that first night of the storm and we had one pipe freeze, but thankfully it thawed pretty quickly the next day with just a, a, a basically a candle set up to provide some heat under the camper that Sean created. So one of the issues we had was uh, carbon monoxide. We were very concerned about carbon monoxide, did a lot of research, talked to a lot of different people. Uh, one thing is this barn, because we're doing the board and batten, we've had a lot of gaps in the barn already. So we have a lot of airflow as it is. It's very high roof and I've got it vented on the top. And that all makes it safe. But at the same time, you really want to protect yourself. So we got three new carbon monoxide detectors in the camper. We checked them all out to make sure that we don't have an issue with that. And we looked at uh, furnace exhaust extensions and they only come in 10 foot lengths or 12 foot lengths. So I kind of had to come up with a different idea because we have about 13 feet from here to the edge of the barn. So this is actually a three inch dryer vent and it's sealed with furnace silicone, which is good up to 450 degrees. The vent goes up here and out the barn and vents right out the side there. Now there is some moisture collection in there and I've taken care of that by removing the, uh, the down slope over there and also putting a bucket under here. But I also want to point out here, one of the issues people sometimes don't consider is that these vents on the side of the RV, one of those is an intake and one of those is exhaust. 
you do not want to cover the intake and you don't want any of your exhaust to get into the intake. So it's very important that you do this correctly because if you don't, your furnace isn't going to work well. And if you really make a mistake, you're going to get carbon monoxide inside the camper. Tell you, from a housekeeping perspective, being inside this barn has been such a tremendous relief. Realize for a minute that we've got seven people living in this camper and each person has two to three pairs of shoes on average. Of course, you've also got Sunday shoes in addition to that. Well, we used to have to find a way to keep most of those in the camper and now we have a dry area outside so it frees up a little space and helps prevent all the rocks and mud from being tracked inside. Praise the Lord for that one. Well, here we are, we have the wood burning stove, but it was kind of a long road to get there because we looked online to try to find used stoves and a lot of them were just kind of worn out. Some of them were too big. Some of them just didn't meet the needs that we had. So we decided, we found a very nice wood stove. This was made by the United States Stove Company. But the problem is it used to be about $250 and I guess with supplies going out of control, uh, it jumped to about $500 really quick. And the problem was it wasn't available anywhere. And if you had it shipped, it would cost another couple hundred dollars. Well, Danielle happened to be in our lo local store and she said, you know what? I know they have stoves here. I'm just gonna check to see if they have it. Well, it wasn't online according to the store, but she walked in the back and there were two of them sitting back there. And guess what? They were about half the price of what we found elsewhere. So she <laughs> called me on the phone and threw it in the car and, and we got it. I like this one. It's a very efficient stove. It's very small, very compact. In fact, we'll be able to move it around later and, and put it where we want to. But um, it, it's nice uh, that we have the thermometer right here on the chimney so it would burn as efficiently as possible and don't build up creosote. We also have an overdraft protection right here. And as you notice, I've got these massive water tanks next to it. We found out that uh, water was one of our biggest problems. And so we decided to go ahead and move the tanks over here next to the stove. It keeps the water warm and um, water has great thermal properties. It holds heat even better than granite or rock. So once this water gets warmed up, it stays warm for a very long time. So in the middle of the night, stove goes out, doesn't matter. The water's going to stay warm and the valves will be thawed in the morning, which is key. There's my chimney coming out the hole. And uh, I always tell the kids, if you see smoke, that's not a good thing. You should always burn the fire up in the green range so that you don't get any smoke. And right now it's uh, it's heating up in there. And as you can see, the only thing coming out of there is heat. Makes a cold day tolerable when you sit here. One of my personal big concerns was our animals. You know, with those storms coming, we still don't have proper shelters for the goats and the chickens. So my goal was really to get them in the barn with us. Well, right before the storm came, we were able to take some old panels we have and set it up. I'm gonna show you that now. Excuse the mess. We're not really organized on this side yet because we're also storing all our construction tools over here. It's really amazing how much you can fit in a 12 by uh, 36 section of a barn. But you can see we literally threw together some panels. Now later, this is actually going to be built stalls, but we don't have the room to build as long as this slide out on the camper is there. So the goats, they're pretty happy. We just line hay around the edges and that gives them something to nibble without wasting the hay or making a big mess or them mucking it up. Because, you know, once a uh, goat messes on their hay, they won't eat it. The cats are pretty happy. They've got company and lots of things to jump on. And even Iris, she gets free run of the whole barn now. Right, girl? She's always around somewhere and just checks in on everybody. I'm going to walk over here, though. I want to show you how we set up a quick chicken coop. So what we did was take two panels and stack them up on each other. Now, I don't know that I would highly recommend this unless you take a lot of precautions, but we tacked boards up onto the barn post and then essentially just used baling twine to tie the panels to that board. We then took 
uh, some um, battens that we had already cut, the one by three battens, and screwed and baling twined them together. So there's one on each side of this panel, which allows the panels to stack, and by having a couple of those on each end, it keeps those panels from collapsing down on top of each other or leaning. So we've had this up a couple days now, and it actually seems pretty secure. We still have a couple of uh, rogue chickens that manage to get up and out, but for the most part, they stay around. You know, one of the thrilling things, when we brought the chickens in here the other night, we got to fully count them all for the first time since we actually moved here. Um, I guess we're about six months now. And every single one of our hens and the rooster have survived. So Iris has done an amazing job keeping predators away. We still have all of our girls and the boy, and they're pretty happy to be in a nice shelter with the rooster waking us up at 5 a.m. every morning outside our window. Well, thanks for joining us on our journey. We've really enjoyed it this week, and we weathered the storm for the most part. <laughs> I think we're actually gonna survive this winter. Realize we would have done things a lot different if we had known it would take this long for the house to be built. This was not our original plan. But you know, sometimes when life gives you lemons, you just gotta figure out how to make lemonade. So if you've subscribed, thank you very much for your support. If not, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. We love to read them.